it is the big one, ladies and gentlemen. Derby County face Portsmouth in a top of the table clash in a couple of days. Uh, it's at eight o'clock kickoff. I believe it is on Sky TV at Portsmouth. It's a very, very important game for both sides. In my opinion, looking at the fixture list in League One, like the preview I did earlier today, I think if Bolton have failed to get their result, then I think Portsmouth can seal promotion. And if Bolton fail to get their result and Derby pick up a draw, I think Derby are all but there, in my opinion. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. But let's get into this full Derby County versus Portsmouth preview. One of the biggest games Paul Warren has had as Derby County manager. Are they going to be able to close down on the top and battle for this League One title heading into the final few games of the season? Why don't you hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already or in this top corner. Let me know your predictions for this game. I'm trying to hit 400 subscribers by the end of April and I know that you as Derby County fans are going to want to help me with all this Derby County and League One content I'm producing. We're going to have all sorts of videos over the summer talking about transfers, retained lists, release lists. Let's get into it at the end of this season. Just five games to go. Let me know your predictions down below. Subscribe while you're down there and I'll let you get back to the video. So here it is, Fratton Park on the 2nd of April at 8 o'clock. It's going to be absolutely bouncing. Derby County travel to Portsmouth. It's going to be a very, very big game. As you can see by the head-to-head -head of the two sides, it's really been a game that's in Derby's favour, but we normally see both sides draw. Back in September, Derby were struggling and Portsmouth scored a really late goal. I believe it was Colby Bishop uh, scored late on in that game to make it 1-1. And then a similar story can be told about the 29th of April. Derby could have had the game out of sight back in that game, but they failed to capitalise on their, um, their, their skill, their ability and the things they showed in that game. And Pompey got a draw. Now, they went on a really good forward run of form towards the back end of last season, heading into that, this season, and they have carried it on all the way through. They are just two goals behind on goal difference, but they are five points ahead with an extra game to play. Shall we take a look at both sides' recent form? Let's see who the danger men are for Portsmouth. Let's take a look at the league table as well. Now, as you can see, Portsmouth have dropped two points in their previous five games. Derby have dropped three points in their previous five games. Both of these sides are very, very up for this promotion battle. We've seen Derby beat the likes of Bolton Wanderers, Bristol, Blackpool and Reading. And Portsmouth have gone to Wickham and won. They've gone to Peterborough and won. They've beat Burton, Albion and Oxford. Both sides have been in very, very impressive form. And they find themselves in this promotion battle not because they are the best teams in the league, but because they are the most consistent. They have done what they need to do to get into this point, and they just have five or six games left to play to seal the deal of getting a return to the championship. Let's now take a look at the league table. This is what the league table looks like heading into the fixture. Obviously, when uh, obviously everyone else plays on the first, we play on the second. It's a very, very interesting few days and it could be a very important fixture for both sides. Obviously, as you can see, Portsmouth are 11 points clear of Bolton Wanderers, Derby County just six. If Bolton are to win against Reading, then Derby would really need a minimum of a draw to keep that four-point cushion. Obviously, we see it right now at six points and that is very, very impressive, but who is going to come out victorious in this game? If you look at the goal scored and conceded column, Derby have seen. I'm going to cover over it with my cursor. If you just look over here, it's over here. So, Derby have scored 70, conceded 35. They've scored four more than Portsmouth and conceded two more than Portsmouth. Both sides are in a very good place. Derby have 25 wins and 10 losses. Portsmouth have 25 wins and four losses and that is the biggest difference in this league table is Derby have dropped too many points in losing games. Let's now take a look at the Portsmouth manager and the Portsmouth squad. 
John Massinho is at the helm for Portsmouth. Just 37 years of age, he ended his playing career at Oxford United and became the coach at Portsmouth. Since then, they have been superb, if I do say so myself. Averaging 1.9 points a game since taking over, he has been in charge of 69 matches, winning 38, drawing 20 and losing 11 of them. I believe they went on something like a 30 game unbeaten, or it might not have been 30, but they crossed over seasons and were on some mega, mega run. Now, most Derby County fans will know him from his time at Oxford United, but He's been in the dugout now since January of 2023, so near enough 13, 14 months, and he has shown that he is more than capable of being a coach at this level and probably stepping up to the next one. So here are the danger men. Obviously, Colby Bishop, the top goal scorer. Abu Kamara, the top assist. And Marlon Pack is a common name, which you will remember. There's also Paddy Lane and Kushini Yangi, who's been on some incredible form recently, coming off the bench for Portsmouth. And these are some of the key players that we need to shut down. A lot of Derby fans also may go and watch Burton, and they'll know the name Connor Shognessy from his time there. And obviously, Derby were interested in midfielder Owen Moxon. Over the January window, according to reports, he found himself joining Portsmouth, and that was a mega deal for Owen Moxon. Has he quite hit the ground running? I'm not 100% sure. I'd love to see what a Portsmouth fan has to say, but I don't think, I don't really know any Portsmouth fans, but obviously they're obviously doing well this season and you can let me know your thoughts down in the comments about this Portsmouth side, but I think they've been absolutely incredible this season. Not really fell off at any point and it's very similar in my opinion to last season where the top team just didn't fall off. Pete, Plymouth and Ipswich last season, Sheffield Wednesday, they just didn't seem to ever fall off and I think that's what we're seeing here. But let's see what happens heading into this game. Shall we now take a look at the Derby County squad? Let's make some early team predictions. And If you haven't checked out my predictions for April, uh, that was posted earlier this morning, so make sure you go and check that one out. I just want to bring up a few words about Corey Blackett-Taylor. I thought he was very, very impressive in the game at the weekend. I thought he really did his job well. He showed us Derby County fans what he is capable of. Just missing that final touch, that final cross, final shot. Uh, but he really seemed to get his act together this weekend. Uh, still not quite in the Paul Wall way, uh, in a sense of defensively. That's something we were warned about by Charlton fans. Uh, but it's going to be very good to see how he develops under Paul Warren. He, he reminds me very much of Mendes Lang from last season where he just didn't quite have the fitness levels in his body to do what Paul Warren wanted. He'd try and try and try, but just didn't have the legs for it. But he showed what he was capable of on the offensive end. You look at what Nathaniel Mendes Lang has done this season in League One and what Corey Blackett-Taylor may do for us over the final five games. Hopefully, he's available heading into Portsmouth. I think he could be a mega, mega player in that game. A player I want to give a bit of a shout out to is, I believe his name is Kai Robinson from Derby County's Academy. He stepped up onto the bench at the weekend when Derby faced up against Blackpool. It wouldn't surprise me if he was on the bench again heading into this game. He's a centre-half who has been uh, on international duty with England under-19s recently for the first time. That is obviously massive for a club like Derby in League One to get their youth players getting recognition at international level. Max Bird didn't get that opportunity to play at those youth levels, didn't get an opportunity with the under-21s England or anything like that. So for me, massive, massive shout-out to both Kai Robinson and Jack Thompson for getting those opportunities. So, what you're looking at on the screen is my team prediction for the upcoming game. Very, very harsh of me to take out Joe Ward, but I feel like this game we're going to need more fight in the middle of the park. I think that midfield three of Smith, Adams and Thompson has the energy with Thompson. It has the tackling ability with Ebu Adams and it has that passing technical ability with Corey Smith. And... For me, I've got nothing wrong with what Joe Ward did at the weekend. I thought he was very good against Blackpool, drifting inside, collecting the ball, creating space for Kane Wilson outside. But I just think this is a game where we need extra bodies in midfield. You'll probably notice up front, I have James Collins. Now, I'm not 100% sure if he's ready to start, 
But I think we've seen recently with both Waghorn and Washington, both just aren't quite up to it, in my opinion. So I think this might be one where Collins gets the nod if he's fit enough to play. I thought Washington did okay, but he missed some really, really big chances uh, against Blackpool. Could have cost us in the end, but luckily didn't. I think Corey Blackett-Taylor had an excellent, excellent game up until he came off. I'm not sure whether it was an injury or cramp. Looked like a bit of cramp with him, uh, but he was very, very exciting to watch. Could go left, could go right. Something which I've I've liked seeing from Mendes Lang, and that's something which we're going to see in the future from Corey Blackett-Taylor, hopefully. I think Liam Thompson is the best bet for that midfield. Obviously, Sibley, Cashin, Nelson, Wilson, that's essentially a setback four at the moment with the injuries we're struggling with. I believe Callum Elder is now out again. Obviously, Ryan Niambi is out till the end of the season and Joe Ward obviously would rotate between right back and right wing, but I don't quite think he has the trust of manager Paul Warren, especially heading into a big game like this at Portsmouth. For me, if we could, I would have gone to a back three just to shore up the defense, just to shore up defensively, and then have a three in midfield. But obviously, losing Barkhazen, losing uh, Niambi, losing Bradley, it's made that very, very difficult. As well as losing the likes of Dwight Gale, it's not been a very good run for injuries for Derby County. But with five games left to play, we have to put it all on the line. So there we have it. There is my preview for Derby County versus Portsmouth. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Hit the subscribe button while you're down there and I'll catch you in my next video. Make sure to go and find me on TikTok pictured here and Twitter pictured here. These are the places where I'll keep you all up to date with all my upcoming videos and my thoughts and feelings around the Formula One and football weekend.